Hello! Some of the typical steps for producing a volume mesh using fluent meshing will be shown in this video. We will look into the creation, management, and visualization of size fields, as well as preparation and creation of a surface mesh using wrapping. Finally, we will go through the volume meshing setup. Typically, for external aerodynamics models, like this landing gear model, we need to hide the outer boundary to see the actual model. As we select the zones to hide them, we can verify that they have proper names. This outlet plane is not properly named, and we can use the eye icon to get all the properties. To change the property of this zone, we use this pencil icon to access the property panel and change both the name and the type. For wrapping, we need to create a size field. Setting an appropriate min size for the size field definition is often the most important step. This hole is a good representation of the minimal size we want to capture. So let's measure it by picking a couple of nodes and using the measure icon. It's between a half and one millimeter. Usually for external aerodynamics models, we need a refinement region to capture the flow in the wake. We have one such region under the geometry objects called BOI, short for body of influence. I can add it to the display and remove it again. This BOI needs to be added to the size field. From the model tree, we can access the mesh sizing controls, and we will use the scope sizing to assign parameters. We can set global min and max sizes. We can use sources like curvature, proximity, hard, soft, mesh, and BOI to define sizes, and these can be assigned to object faces and or edges, globally or locally. Both the scoped size controls and the calculated size fields can be saved and retrieved. So, let's read in a predefined size field to see what it looks like. We use the File Read Size Field option to read in a size field. We change to the zone selection. Use the box selection option to select the lower part of the model. One way of displaying the size field is by using a couple of shortcuts. Note that dark blue represents small sizes and we can clearly see that all the small details have been nicely refined. Let's zoom back into the small hole again. By changing back to point selection and selecting this size probe icon, we can probe sizes and visually verify that the mesh size is sufficient to capture this hole. Let's redraw the full model and use the clipping plane in the Y direction to see inside the domain. For wrapping of a flow volume, we always need to define a material point. We can access the material point definition panel from the tree. In this creation form, we can easily define the location of the material point by computing the center of two zones. The location is verified by this preview option and we assign it a suitable name. We now are ready to make the final preparations for wrapping and the context menu in the tree actually works like a checklist. When gaps are closed, we change the original geometry, so extracting out new edges ensures that the edges in the geometry match. Lowering the angle captures more features. We have intersections between the hull and the gear so we need to extract all those intersection loops. We have the option to do both high and low wrapping, high being the default, resulting in excellent feature capturing, while the low is the quick and dirty option. All holes should be closed in this model, so we can go straight to the wrap panel. Assign a name and select the material point. By setting the resolution factor to 0.5, the initial wrap is much finer, leading to better geometry capturing. Wrapping of this model will take about 10 to 15 minutes, so let's instead open the ready wrapped model in another session. We have a new mesh object in the tree called Fluid, so let's draw it. We hide a few faces and look at the mesh on the landing gear. We can see that the details have been well captured and that the quality of the surface mesh is excellent. We can further verify this by using the Summary option in the Context menu. For a surface mesh, the skewness should have a quality value below 0.7.
By accessing the quality section of the diagnostics tool, setting the quality bound to 0.7 and clicking on apply all, the quality criteria can be reached. Before volume meshing, let's compute the regions. This will identify all closed regions in the mesh object and validate that the volumes are topologically correct. As expected, we only have a single fluid region. From the cell zone menu, access the auto mesh panel where we can assign all the volume mesh settings. For prism generation, we are using the scoped method. We use a first aspect ratio of five. The remaining parameters and options are already appropriately set. We are growing prism only on wall boundaries. By creating the scoped control and drawing it, we can verify that prisms are assigned to the correct boundaries. For the tet meshing setup, we just make sure that the size function option is invoked. We are now ready to volume mesh. Again, this will take about 10 to 15 minutes, and let's instead jump ahead and look at the final mesh. Here we can see a cutting plane through the final mesh, and we can clearly see the refinement region behind the landing gear. Zooming into the landing gear, we can see the prism layers and how they handle areas of proximity. We can check the quality from the tree, and as we can see, the quality is acceptable. We are ready to transfer this model directly to the Fluent Solver using this Switch to Solution button.